I finally finished my Linux Crossfire Buffer Overflow for version 1.9 in Linux, and I wanted to share it. Just a reminder, you can find the original post on my blog, link in the description, along with any referenced links and source code. The Crossfire RPG game for Linux is vulnerable to a buffer overflow in the setup function of the server. This is a vulnerability that PandaTrax partly covered in his exploit development course, so I thought I'd share. If you do not want to follow along, then there is already a working exploit. First, I attempted to install the vulnerable version from the exploit DB posting. Originally, this was causing some errors. That said, I was able to fix that by downloading a few more libraries. Unfortunately, even with a seemingly insecure binary, I was unable to get an exploit working. Unfortunately, while I was unable to get the exploit DB version working, I remembered that this exploit was also part of the OSCP. First, I downloaded the pre-compiled binaries from Offsec. Then, I extracted the archive and verified that the proper files were there. Finally, I verified the server's protection mechanisms. To fuzz the target, I used the following Python script to verify the crash. With the server started, I ran my exploit script. Finally, in GDB, I saw the crash and an EIP overwrite. To find the offset, I reduced the size of my buffer until it was just long enough to still get the EIP overwrite. Then, I used pattern create to generate a cyclical pattern of this length, 4379. Putting this payload into the exploit script gave me a new EIP value. Next, I used pattern offset to find the exact location of the offset. Finally, I attempted to verify the EIP overwrite with a string of Bs. As EIP was now overwritten with 4242442, I knew that I had the proper offset value. With control over EIP, it was time to jump to a working payload. First, I located a few jump ESP operations inside of the binary. Next, I updated my EIP overwrite with one of the new values. With that in place, I set a breakpoint on my jump ESP, and it got to it. At this point, I figured I would be home free, but I was wrong. First, I generated a reverse TCP payload to connect back to my attacking box. I thought this would jump to my payload, but only because I was working under that assumption. As you can tell, EIP ESP isn't actually pointing to my payload, although EAX almost is. In this case, it was time to jump to EAX plus 12 as opposed to just jumping to ESP. First, I got the opcodes for add EAX 12 and jump EAX. Note that this was the current version of my exploit after adding these additional commands. Next, I also turned off PAE and NX in my VirtualBox settings just to make sure that something wasn't silently preventing my execution. <laughs> Unfortunately, regardless of what I tried, my exploit kept breaking at the Zor DWORD pointer EBP plus 19 EBX operation. Note that the most likely cause of this was something mangling one of the registers used in the operation. That said, I didn't want to look too deep down this rabbit hole and it was occurring in multiple MS Venom payloads. Unable to get an MS Venom payload to work, I grabbed some shellcode from Shellstorm. When I plugged my new shellcode into my exploit, the application didn't seem to immediately seg fault. When I ran netstat, there was indeed something listening on port 1337. Finally, I was able to connect to the port and execute commands. In the end, this was my final working exploit. While this is an older exploit, it was still a good example of a standard Linux stack-based overflow. Additionally, it had the advantage of not being a direct jump into ESP for the payload. The nice thing about this exploit is that it jumps to the beginning of the payload instead of the middle of a NOP sled. As Corlan likes to say, that's the proper way to do things. I'm hoping you learned something from this walkthrough and maybe I'll add this to an exploit DB page soon as well. And as always, you can check out this video suggested by YouTube or click those like and subscribe buttons if you want to help me grow the channel.